couple of the big deviations I tend to see being a fitness professional and coming into our boot camp that we have to help uh, kind of rehabilitate and kind of learn proper movement again. There's a couple of them. First and foremost, right there in the hips. A lot of us have hip issues. Some of us have some lumbar lower doses, which just means you're sticking that booty out there, or what I often call a Saturday night booty. And there are some cases when we want Saturday night booty. Anytime we are overloading top down, such as in a barbell squat, uh, or even with a kettlebell squat, anytime we're loading up that spine, uh, whether the weight is on top of our shoulders or down by our side, we still are getting loaded top down. We're basically in the same line as gravity. Right? Whenever we're doing that, whenever we got top down, that's when we do want to stick that booty out there. The reason being is because there's many studies out there that show that many of us already have bulging discs or herniated discs, discs that are giving us big problems before we even know it. We don't even feel it. In fact, I might even have that. All right, but one of the ways that we can help promote a healthy back, healthy shoulders, uh, is through optimal alignment. And normally whenever we're doing regular movements, uh, we want to tuck those hips underneath and squeeze those glutes. It's going to help activate those glutes. Uh, for those of us that are oftentimes sitting down a lot, and we don't get a whole lot of glute movement. Those glutes are hip extensors. They keep those hips tucked underneath us. However, if they're underactive, uh, and if we've got super, super loose muscles everywhere else, uh, such as uh, right there in the hammies, or right here in the, uh, the front hip flexors, or I'm sorry, the uh, abdominals, uh, we often get a really, really uh, agitated or really uh, uh, arched back when we're walking around. Some of us might have seen these people walking around out there in the real world that walk around just like so. All right? So in those cases, that's a very, very pronounced, and you won't see too many of those, but in those cases, we want to activate those glutes. And this is a really, really good movement that we can help activate those glutes. And it's going to look super, super goofy, but it's basically just a hip thrust. So we're going to stick that booty out there, and then we're going to tuck those hips underneath by squeezing those glutes bracing the abdominal, and then extend back out, or relax those abdominals and relax those glutes. Brace the abdominals, brace the glutes, and back out. Now this would be the first uh, of our movements, and you can kind of think of it uh, and as goofy as it sounds, kind of like a Kegel, right? We're activating our uh, posture setters, right? These muscles help, uh, help stabilize the whole core. Our torso is actually the spine, so we might even argue the shoulders, as well as the pelvis, all right? So another good way that we can help activate this, and you'll see this in our dynamic warm-up, uh, is called a uh, quadruped uh, prone position or, or a uh, quadruped opposite arm, opposite leg raise. It's also called a bird dog. So you're going to get uh, down on all fours, and you're going to focus on keeping the back neutral leg raise and the abdominals yet again, and keep those hips, uh, uh, we want to move uh, uh, those hips just ever so slightly. I want you to focus on the movement that's actually going on naturally in those hips. Now you're going to keep, like I said, brace the abdominals, keep that spine as neutral as possible, but extend the opposite arm, opposite leg raise. And we're going to keep going out for repetitions on the same side. Again, we don't want to arch that back and stick that leg up as high as possible. Not looking for that. Keep it as parallel as we can and draw it back in. Brace the abdominals, keep from flexing, uh, flexing in the lower back uh, and back out. All right. And the movement we're feeling here is essentially what the yogis call the, uh, the cat and the dog, right? Uh, so that's a, that's proper pelvic movement. Again, going back into our relax those uh, those glutes, relax the abdominals, brace the glutes, brace the abdominals. And you'll see this in our planks uh, that we'll be doing as well. All right. The next uh, exercise or the next uh, uh, improper movement dysfunction that I see a lot is again in the shoulders. And I just mentioned uh, that I often see lots of weak core musculature. And I also said that many would argue the shoulders are a portion of the torso or a portion of the core. Not just right here in the abdominals, but it also includes the lower back, those glutes, uh, right here in the front hip flexors. It also includes uh, the shoulders. All right. And what we often see are rounded shoulders or uh, what we also say uh, as really, really relaxed uh, uh, middle traps, uh, maybe some super, super tight upper traps if we have the shrugs, but we don't see that too typically. One of the greatest exercises we can do, and we'll do this without being on the ground first, we'll call them up in the air, uh, scapular push-ups or push-outs. So you're just going to pull those shoulder blades together, which is the first movement of any row, and then press those shoulders back out. So retract those shoulder blades, pinching them back there as if you've got a fly between, sit between those shoulder blades, and you're trying to pinch it, get out of there, get out of there and then bring those shoulders out and forward. And so we're going to round those shoulders just a little bit there, brace the core, and then pull those shoulders back. And you can see, when I pull those shoulders back, I stand up much taller, right? 
If I let their shoulders round forward, my abdominals relax, my glutes relax, it affects the entirety of my core. And it's just terrible posture that's gonna lead to injury in the future, especially if I'm overloading with any kind of a weight. But as soon as I pull their shoulders back, my abdominals brace just a tiny bit, my glutes, their glutes therefore, have to activate as well. So I start standing up just a little bit taller. Let their shoulders come down, pull their shoulders back. All right? Now anytime we're doing one of these exercises, we want to tuck that chin just ever so lightly, not down into the uh, uh, chest, but keep it as neutral as possible. All right? So we're going to progress that into scapular push-ups. So either knees or toes, I'll let you decide, whatever's going to be right for you. Relax those shoulders and let your chest sink down with straight arms, and then drive through those palms, or actually drive uh, using your shoulders back up and down. Scapular push-ups. Now this is great at learning how uh, to properly activate the shoulders. And that's paramount before we start moving into any kind of ropes, any kind of, uh, again, top-loaded exercises, any kind of uh, exercises that are going to give us any kind of heavy weight because we have to learn proper movement mechanics before we move into it. So stability, mobility, and uh, build up proper posture before we start loading up on speed or strength. 